Welcome back. We're here with author Catherine Orfid, author of Become Your Number One Fan. She's a confidence coach. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes, <laughs> boy. I didn't think I could be jealous living in LA, <laughs> but Hawaii makes it very possible to be Someone's jealous. Someone's got to do it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your journey. What inspired this fantastic book? It started probably about 29 years ago. Um, short version of the story, man of my dreams turned into my biggest nightmare. <laughs> and We've heard that story many times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in hindsight, he was my biggest gift, yeah, as is always sure. the case. Yeah. However, at the time, I didn't know I was adopted, so I couldn't understand why when he dumped me, I felt so worthless wow. that I couldn't even run my performing arts school. And so I struggled on, I put my superwoman cape on, as I call it, and I, you know, women are very good at this, pretending we're okay, mm -hmm. when inside I was far from okay. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't sustain it. So about nine, 10 months into that, I decided that if I turned on music and I couldn't feel anything, when music had given me this joy and it was my creative expression, if I couldn't do that anymore, I didn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually planning to take my own life. Thankfully, I didn't because I'm here today. Mm -hmm. And my inner critic was chastising me for not even being able to organize my own suicide. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say that when I chose life and I decided, okay, I'm never going to allow anyone to rob me of my self-esteem and my self-worth ever again. I'm going to immerse myself in it and find out how I build that. And then I also started, I don't know if you've heard of the beautiful late Louise Hay. Of course, course. love Louise Hay. So her book was the foundation of which I really rebuilt my life after falling into a thousand pieces like Humpty Dumpty. And she didn't know back then about neuroplasticity, but she, I used to sing this song called I Love Myself the Way I Am. There's nothing I need to change. And my inner critic was having a field day, oh, with a nose like that, and blah, blah, all this negative nonsense and she used to say just keep singing the song well now we know uh, that we can create new neural pathways in our brain mm -hmm. so when I started doing that amongst a whole lot of other modalities I really did transform my life so it's such an honor to be here mm -hmm. on transformational Tuesday Wonderful. and that's why I wrote this book because I'm just a normal human being and if I can do it, everyone else can right. do it. It's just a matter of how. And I've put everything in that book. Yeah. Good. Catherine, thank you so much for getting vulnerable and letting us know that. Because I think that so many people, I know that we've gone through similar things as far as, you know, feeling like, you know, we don't want to live, but not taking our life and things like that. And I don't mm -hmm. know if you're, if you're human, if you haven't gone through something where you feel like questioning this whole thing. So thank you so much for mm -hmm. showing up fully to life. Yeah, yeah. it res mm -hmm. resonates with me so deeply, of course, because I've been through my own experiences. And I would always say, I don't think I really, truly trust someone unless they've been through serious depression <laughs> and maybe even <laughs> contemplated suicide, right? Because it brings you face to face with what's real mm -hmm. um, about yourself and about life. And it helps you question things that you often take for granted. So what is it that I love and why do I wake up every morning? All these very interesting questions, right? And so for you, how did you turn that corner? How did you turn the corner from that deep, dark depression and suicidal thoughts to getting to the place you are today where you just seem so full of joy and confidence? And Interestingly enough, uh, not dissimilar to Holly, the one thing that I knew I had to do was move. Mm -hmm. Because when we're depressed, mm -hmm. we don't move. We just mm -hmm. really want to curl up and stay in bed. I was That's having anxiety attacks. I didn't want to get out of bed. And I had only just started to learn tennis. And I loved it. Mm. So a friend of mine would come and drag me out of bed and I would go play tennis. Mm. And then that, you know, it's little tiny steps. Just like anything we want to achieve in life. Mm. If we think about the big picture, it can be overwhelming. For me, it was like hour at a time, afternoon at a time, day at a time. And then the, if we change our body, it changes. If we change our physiology, it changes our thought process. If we change our thought process, it changes our physiology. They're interlaced. So it was about doing that. And then thankfully, I was surrounded by all these beautiful performing arts students. And I always say to people, if they're feeling a little low or depressed, get out, find a children's playground, yeah. go watch children play. Mm -hmm. Because their energy lifted me. Mm -hmm. And I also made a vow to myself, I'll never allow anyone to take away my self-esteem and I'm going to become the woman I want to become. Because mm -hmm. as a child, we absorb the good, the bad and the ugly, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas I went, there was a part of me, I'd done enough of Louise's work to know, wow, this is exciting because I can choose who I want to become mm -hmm. and get busy doing that. So How true. would you describe that woman you wanted to become? 
I wanted to be powerful and yet vulnerable. I was way too independent. I was already mm. extremely successful in my school. I wanted to really expand um, my ability as a facilitator and trainer and continue to run workshops mm. so that I could teach people to learn to love themselves from the inside out mm. instead of what I was doing, which was looking for everyone else's acknowledgement that I was okay. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's important that um, that you've done this at your age. I think that we have a mentality that you, you know, you can't do anything if you're past 25 and you haven't oh. started or whatever. And it's really important. So thank you so much for, you know, knowing who you are. At, you know, we're not, we're not 20 years old anymore and we can reinvent ourselves and create whatever. It's so important. Yeah. It's absolutely true. I, I love that. And I think a huge part of this is the confidence piece, right? That as you sort of go from that place of being so depressed to, and you're working your way up that emotional scale, um, eventually you get to a place where you're really wanting to set a solid foundation for confidence. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because this inner critic, I have a friend that calls it your inner crackhead. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, it's like it always needs a fix, you know, something negative, yeah. something unhealthy. So for you, what would you say to people, you know, that are trying to build their confidence, but they don't feel good about their body or the way they look or maybe their intelligence? How do you get around that? How do you find confidence anyway? Two things. First of all, confidence is a learned skill. People think that people are born confident. No, we're not. It's learnt. Uh, Brenda Bashad talks about the confidence, confidence loop. Yeah. And if we actually do a skill over and over and over and over again, then we become competent and that builds confidence. Mm -hmm. But you've got to start wow. with doing something over and over and over again, then it builds the confidence. Self-esteem, on the other hand, we all come in with. I have this webinar that I do sometimes, a house of confidence. Self-esteem is a foundation and we all had it when we came in and we all had self-worth. We knew our needs were important. Then when we do little tiny steps, we create self-belief mm -hmm. and then the roof of the house is confidence. Mm. So what I suggest to viewers that may be feeling lacking in confidence, lacking in self-esteem, find a picture of themselves as a tiny baby. Mm. Somewhere between the age of six months and 18 months before we start hearing the messages that, oh, that was silly, yeah, that was clumsy, that was naughty, because we don't know the difference. And so if you find a picture of yourself at that age, put it on your devices, put it up where mm. you're going to see it morning and night, and every morning open your eyes and go, I'm going to treat you with the love and the respect oh, that you that. really deserve. Yeah. I love that so much. I, Unfortunately, we're out of time I again. Uh, oh, great guys. I have so much. Thank you so much for all your wisdom. And I think it's, I'm so excited to look at your book and take a look and how can people find you? They can find me on my website, katherineorford.com. And I'm doing a Become Your Number One Fan 31 Day Challenge to help people get started on this journey or to continue on the journey. Mm, Such a pleasure. So excited. Wow, so, so inspiring. So nice to meet you. Stay tuned. We're actually bringing everyone back for the final segment as we're going to talk about soup cleanses and transforming your life right here. Stay tuned.